This is Mac OS Ken. A bullish note on Apple services, iPhone and retail news for China and India, and Apple Vision Pro may have sent Samsung back to the drawing board. It is Friday, the 7th of July, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MOK50 and use code MOK50 for 50% off plus free shipping. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Evercore analyst Ahmed Dariyanani seems positively bullish on Apple services. Apple 3.0 ran part of a note he wrote on Thursday, wherein he said he sees Apple services as well positioned to maintain double-digit growth through fiscal year 27 and beyond. The note is based on Evercore's annual survey of iOS users. Hitting a few pertinent points, Apple Pay seems to be growing. This year's survey had 64% of respondents indicating that they have used Apple Pay. That's up from 57% for last year's survey. 24% of respondents indicated that they use Apple Pay for over 50% of their purchases. Demand for the Apple One bundle is growing, with 28% of respondents indicating that they subscribe to the bundle versus 18% last year. Darianani and company figured that that is helping to drive adoption of Apple Music and Apple TV+. He and his continue to be surprised in a good way by the uptake of iCloud and Apple Care. Despite their stated surprise, they expect both of those to keep going up as people keep making and buying more stuff to store in the cloud, and as the iPhones they buy keep getting more expensive. Here in the States, average revenue per user is about $110. That is ahead of Evercore's global estimate of $81. NetNet says the note, Our survey indicated Apple services continue to grow across the board and surprise to the upside on average revenue per user. Apple Pay, Music, and TV Plus saw the most notable increases versus the 2022 survey. Mr. Darianani has an outperform rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is 210 bucks. 9 to 5 Mac ran a story Thursday that kind of hurt my head. The piece was based on numbers from CounterPoint Research, which has been looking at smartphone sales tied to China's 618 shopping festival. Originally one day, the 18th of June, 618 now runs from the 1st of June through the 18th. Though originally tied to one online retailer, JD.com, 618 has become a whole big national sales thing likened by 9 to 5 Mac to Cyber Monday here in the States. The bad news for China. Counterpoint Research says smartphone sales were down 8% for 618.23 versus the same period a year earlier. The good news for Apple. iPhone sales were up 8%. That's better than the 4% decline seen around 618.22 though that was seen as a win for Apple, with the rest of the smartphone market falling 25%. Now the numbers start to hurt my head. Might need a spreadsheet, don't want to go there. Mostly I'm okay. Until we get to this part. iPhone's 8% rise over 618 came on the back of discounts. Actual discounts from Apple of roughly 20%. While discounts on Apple gear in China are not new, Apple doesn't tend to dirty its own hands with those. Rather, it offers discounts to third-party sellers who pass those savings on to consumers. 9to5Mac indicates that Apple did offer discounts of its own on a number of products for 618 last year. 
though this year's 20% discounts are seen as particularly significant. So how is iPhone doing in China? Yeah, that's the part that hurts my head. Let's say we spin the globe to Apple's next China. A piece from India's Economic Times has the Cupertino company looking to boost revenue on the subcontinent with a focus on retail. That includes Apple's online store, its two physical stores in India, and the roughly 200 authorized resellers. One of the big pushes highlighted in the piece includes discounts for students. The report says Apple has offered education promotions through its partners in the past, though the Economic Times says the offers are different in the company-owned stores. That makes Apple's own offers sound better in India, which would be a departure from how back-to-school and EDU promos tend to work here in the States. As for its retail partners in India, Apple has an idea for their stores. Make them more like Apple stores where most of the partner stores are said to be between 800 and 1,200 square feet. An unnamed exec says Apple has advised its partners to increase the area to 2,000 square feet wherever it's possible. Similarly, the secret person says retail partners are advised to focus on redoing the interior and improving the experience of the customer. That might sound like a no-brainer, but it's worth remembering these stores have been operating without Apple stores as comparisons for India's consumers. An exec with the retail consultancy SRED points out that Apple Store in Delhi has become the go-to place for buyers of Apple products. His advice runs similar to Apple's, saying the buyer is looking for a better experience, which the company-owned store is able to provide, other stores should also focus on adopting a similar model. One expects new operating systems to be faster, though iOS 17 will apparently bring a slowdown that might annoy some people. Mac Rumors says the anticipated wait time for funds transfers out of Apple savings accounts appears to be getting longer. Well, either it is getting longer or... Apple's giving its banking partner a bit of wiggle room. No, this has nothing to do with the workings of iOS 17, and yet that is where we find the wording. In iOS 16, Apple Savings Account says automated clearinghouse transfers typically take one to three business days to complete. In the iOS 17 beta, the wording says funds are typically available for withdrawal by the fifth business day. According to Mac Rumors, the transfer time clarification comes after a number of complaints from Apple Card owners who opted into the savings account when it became available. Apple Savings Account users have had issues with long wait times when attempting to withdraw funds. Wouldn't you hope they would work on getting the funds to move faster rather than lowering expectations? Well, maybe it's the latter, then the former. Mac Rumor says it's unclear whether the extended transfer time is a permanent change or a temporary measure, while Apple and Goldman Sachs work on resolving the issues behind the scenes. More news in a moment, but first a word from HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit and sponsor of today's show. Are you looking for meals that are seasonal, fresh, and delicious? then you are looking for HelloFresh. They take care of the meal planning and deliver the ingredients so everything you need to make delicious meals comes right to you. And it doesn't take long to get there. Their ingredients travel from the farm to your door in less than seven days for quality you can taste. It's just the amount you need, it costs less than takeout, and it is delicious. The tilapia with scallion sriracha pesto that I made didn't seem like it should work. But boy, did it. Really tasty. As were all of the meals I've had with HelloFresh. Let me know what you make. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MOK50 and use code MOK50 
for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash M-O-K-5-0 and code M-O-K-5-0 for 50% off plus free shipping. Taste what's made HelloFresh America's number one meal kit. Use code M-O-K-5-0 for 50% off plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash M-O-K-5-0. Three tales of Apple Vision Pro and upsets around it. Starting inside the Apple camp, a piece from Mac Rumors says Test Flight, Apple's app for testing other apps, now supports the first Vision OS beta. According to Apple's developer update, the testing application now supports Vision OS apps for internal and external testing, as well as testing iOS and iPadOS apps on Vision OS. Kind of exciting, save a couple of details. First, the piece says the update means developers may soon be able to use TestFlight for testing apps designed for Apple Vision Pro. What does that mean? It supports TestFlight, but TestFlight doesn't support it? Of course, the bigger issue, nobody's actually got a Vision Pro yet. Apple will be making developer kits available beginning this month, though how and when and for whom are not yet clear. I guess you might be able to run tests on some Facebook hardware. Q the Apple Lawyers reads the headline of a piece from Tom's Guide. Someone got the Vision Pro interface running on MetaQuest Pro. I mean, not really. They didn't break and load Apple's OS. Made by a company called Supernova Technologies to promote its Nova UI framework for Unity, the piece says the demo recreates the Vision OS grid-style app layout, letting you navigate the menu and select apps hands-free, just as you would with an actual Vision Pro. Unfortunately, this is about it, and attempting to open an app doesn't do anything. Also, the cameras on MetaQuest Pro are on the underside, so don't move your hands too far to run the apps you can't run. Still, I guess it's something to do if you already have a MetaQuest Pro. Even further out from Apple, the site Upload VR says it may be back to the drawing board for Samsung. Earlier this year, the South Korean electronics giant said that it was working on an XR headset. That has apparently been pushed back. Citing a South Korean news site, Upload VR says Samsung recently informed partners that the headset project would be delayed. The report says the original production target was early 2024, but the new target is three to six months later. Why the delay? The piece has an official familiar with Samsung's internal circumstances indicating that the delay is caused by a redesign and specs upgrade prompted by the reveal of Apple Vision Pro. Formula One fans got the smallest, shortest first look at a big Brad Pitt film Thursday. The Hollywood Reporter says Apple Studios has revealed a first look image from Brad Pitt's hotly anticipated Formula One feature. That look came in the form of a photo of a Formula One racer posted on the official F1 Twitter account. Helmed by Top Gun Maverick director Joseph Kaczynski, the film currently has no title and no release date. It's got a picture of a car, though, so... Zoom, zoom, zoom. If the statement, existence is absurd, is one that resonates then Apple TV Plus has a series for you. The Cupertino streamer issued a press release Thursday announcing a premiere date for the adult animated series Strange Planet, based on the Nathan W. Pyle graphic novel of the same name. The release says Strange Planet is a hilarious and perceptive look at a distant world not unlike our own. Set in the whimsical world of cotton candy pinks and purples, relatable blue beings explore the absurdity of everyday human traditions. 
The show is co-created and executive produced by Pyle and Dan Harmon, creator of such shows as Rick and Morty and Community. The 10-episode series starts its run with a three-episode premiere on Wednesday, the 9th of August. They'll run one a week after that through Wednesday, the 27th of September. And finally today, the second season of the epic Apple TV Plus sci-fi series Foundation starts one week from today, and Apple really doesn't want you to forget that. Cult of Max, says the Cupertino streamer, has outed a second official trailer for the second season. According to the piece, the trailer shows the Galactic Empire and the Foundation preparing for a war, with the gorgeous special effects and cinematography that are a highlight of the series very much on display. I'm not going to tell you much more, only because I wish I didn't know as much as Cult of Mac told me. Galactic society is still in peril, the story is still huge. Jared Harris, Lee Pace, Lulo Bell, and Leah Harvey still star. Season 1 of Foundation is available to stream now on Apple TV+. Season 2 begins its 10-episode run with a single episode next Friday, the 14th of July. The second Season 2 trailer. Third, if you count the teaser. The latest trailer, let's say, is available now on YouTube. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by HelloFresh. Go to hellofresh.com slash mok50 and use code mok50 for 50% off plus free shipping. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and that your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.